John Chaney's record remarkable 34 seasons as a head coach. The 741 career wins, 22nd all-time. Three ahead of his good pal John Calipari. Despite that incident, those two uh, developed a tremendous relationship over the years. And John Chaney will certainly miss him in this game. And we are delighted to be joined by one of John Chaney's protégés, head coach at Temple now, Aaron McKee. Aaron, I, I want to invite you in to uh, join us as we remember Coach Chaney. When you, when you think of John Chaney and someone says, Tell me what has meant the most to you about him. What's the first thing that comes to mind? Well, it, it, it brings a smile to my face because, um, you know, he's one of those guys that he's a character, you know, first of all. Um, he's, he was always one of those coaches who was misunderstood from, from someone who's just watching him from, from television. But if you had the opportunity to sit down and break bread with him or sit down and talk basketball, he was, he was just a – a great person and just a great ambassador for this for this university and he's going to be he's going to be missed and i just think of him as 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 just a, a mentor a, a father figure a leader in this community and just someone that that cared about so many and, and aaron too certainly if you were going to uh, be around john cheney particularly at practice you had to get up early uh, very early in the yeah. morning billis you did that you did that from time to time did you not <laughs> I did. I, I, uh, the Atlantic 10 was my beat when I first got started with ESPN. So I did John Chaney's games back when they played at McGonagall. I was there quite a bit. And I did yeah. go to some early morning practices. And uh, he would walk in. The team would already be on the floor working with the assistants, whether it's Dan Leibowitz or Dean Demopoulos, whomever. And they'd be working on stuff that John Chaney had talked about the day before. So he'd stop practice. He'd have a cup of coffee in his hands. And he would get everybody in the stands and give a lecture that was worthy of any sermon I've ever heard. And then the assistants, yeah. the assistant coaches would have to come up with, with drills for the next day on, on what he talked <laughs> about. He was fiercely, fiercely loyal and protective of his players, but very demanding of them. And, uh, and just, uh, I mean, he was, a, he was an American original and someone I loved listening to. And just a, a great coach, but an even better man. I mean, he was a great player, too. Played in the old Eastern Eight and then uh, won a national championship when he coached at Cheney State. He didn't get the job at Temple until he was 50 years old. And uh, uh, there's never been anyone like John Cheney. He, he was an original. Yeah, Coach, to me, he fought for what was right when it wasn't fashionable to fight for what was right. And what I mean by that, think about standardized testing uh, in, regard, in regards to admission standards. He fought for that, and he created change. He also, to me, when I look at Coach, he was part preacher, part coach, part uh, mentor, part a little bit of everything. But the one story that I love the most, when we used to go to the head coaches meetings at the NABC, eventually they'd ask for questions. And Coach Cheney would always stand up. Sometimes it would be 10 minutes, and Aaron, as you know, sometimes it would be 30 minutes. But I can tell you one thing. <laughs> right. No matter what, what he said, you always walked out of that meeting and you were more enlightened on the subject he was talking about. Uh, you were be better educated on the subject he was talking about. And he looked at that subject through a unique prism. And I know walking out of those meetings, I walked out and said, he's an incredible human being. Uh, he's a uh, humanitarian, and he's a guy that built bridges for young African-American coaches to cross to create their own legacies through their own coaching careers. Not many people can say that. Yeah, I didn't have the privilege of knowing Coach Cheney intimately and personally, but I had the privilege of playing against his teams in the late 80s, shaking and baking with Mark Macon, Tim Perry, Dwayne <laughs> Coswell, and the one thing I can always say about his guys, they were always prepared, they played with an edge, and they executed the game plan really well. And then I went on, Mark Macon was my teammate uh, with the Denver Nuggets my first year, played with Eddie Jones my last two years with the Miami Heat. And the one constant with those guys, too, really, they were very respectful and polite on one end, and yet their knowledge of the game was really strong on the other end. And you got to give kudos and credit to Coach Cheney for that. Aaron, you now sit in the seat that John Cheney occupied so well. What do you believe is the enduring legacy uh, of John Cheney? Well, he's, he's obviously cemented his legacy um, as a college coach, as a basketball coach. Um, he's in the Hall of Fame, you know, because of that. But I just think him being a mentor and, as I said earlier, just a father figure and, and someone who cared. He's, he was always up for the fight and for the challenge. And, and we, you guys spoke when you touched on talking about uh, Proposition 48 and, and 
just access to quality education. And that's that's for all and mainly for, you know, inner city kids. And, and you know, I was a victim of that. And, and here I am now. He fought for me and, you know, he got me a seat at the table. I was able to, you know, go to college and thrive. I graduated from Temple University in four years. And, you know, I, I'm one of the anomalies where I got the opportunity to go on and play professional basketball. But, you know, I couldn't be here as a uh, college coach right now if I didn't get my degree. And, and there's so many others just like me. Their stories are just like me. And, and, and I'm one of the guys that, that, that I'm here to able, you know, I'm able to, to talk about it. But there's so many others who, who no one else believed in and, and coach uh, believed in those guys and, and put them in situations where they can thrive and be, be successful. And, and the only way that you can do that and the only way he thought that you can do that was, was through education. So it's always been important to him, and I think that's a big part of his legacy is not only being a great college coach but the importance of, of education to, to our youth. He spoke about that so often for sure. Not only spoke about it, but lived it. And you're an example of that. Aaron, thanks a lot for being with us. Our condolences uh, on the loss of John Cheney. We appreciate you being with us this morning. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.